Hey, this is Kale, the Venom Teacher. I get a lot of questions from people about how to stay safe with rattlesnakes when you're out hiking or camping or even around your house uh, if you live near the edge of the desert or wilderness. And so I am making this video to help educate people about uh, rattlesnakes and what to expect. So if, generally, if you find a rattlesnake in the wild, if you leave it alone, uh, then they're fine. You don't have to, to move them, you don't have to kill them or anything. So I just found this rattlesnake and I'm actually about two feet away from him. And you can see he's not doing anything. This is just a wild rattlesnake. He's probably out here hunting. And if I just leave him alone and walk away, uh, there's not gonna be any problem here. But some people will find him like this, they'll pick him up, they'll try to kill him and they think that they're, they're helping out, but these rattlesnakes are supposed to be here. They're doing a job. Uh, they play an important role in our environment. So if you're out camping and you find a rattlesnake curled up uh, around you like this, they'll often curl up near rocks or trees or things, and they're, they're actually out there hunting. You, you can just leave them alone. If it's a problem and you have family, uh, a lot of the the county parks around here, or state parks, they have park rangers that will remove the snakes for you. And so there's always options where you can call people. You can have, they'll come, they'll take the snake out into the desert and let it go. So there, there are a lot of options and it's easy to stay safe. Uh, I like to explain to people that you just need to look around. You shouldn't be putting your hands down in bushes. You need to be observant of your surroundings. If you pay attention, it's very easy to stay safe. These snakes aren't dangerous. Uh, look at this one, for example. I've been sitting here for several minutes now, and he's still just sitting there. I mean, he, he doesn't feel threatened by me, so he hasn't really done anything. But if I was to reach down there and start to mess with him, poke him, try to move him, he might start to rattle at that point. But they're, they're not uh, really aggressive towards us. They're not going to chase us. They're not going to, to do a lot of the things that people think they're going to do. Rattlesnakes really just want to be left alone to do their thing. So if you do find a rattlesnake uh, where you feel like it does need to re be removed, it might be use your camping or something and you do not have access to park rangers. So you can easily remove rattlesnakes uh, on your own. I don't usually recommend people to do that, but you can take a walking stick and you can pick up the snake in the middle of the body, kind of hook it on there and just move it. Uh, some of the dangers of that is when people are walking, the snake might fall off the stick and you might step into it. So you do need to, to be careful and mindful uh, if there's somebody in your group that feels comfortable doing that. But you, you don't have to pin the rattlesnake. Some people will pin it behind the head. And that, that is when the snake really starts to get uh, defensive. It feels like it's being killed uh, by a predator. And so it's going to do everything it can to get loose. And, and that does hurt the snake when you, you pin it and force it to, to stop moving like that. So it's best to find somebody that is trained professional to move them, but if you really need to, you can do it like that. I think it's better to do that than to, to kill them. Many people do shoot them thinking that they're doing a, a justice, but this, there are snakes all over. And like this one right here, you probably walk by many of them that don't rattle. And, and this one still has not rattled at me at all. Another question I get a lot is what do you do if you ever get bit by a rattlesnake? And so the, the only thing that you really can do is get antivenom. So rattlesnakes, uh, they used to have a lot of uh, things that they taught, like the, the cut and suck method, which does not work. You, you can't, if a rattlesnake bites you, you can't suck the venom out of your body. Uh, it's actually better to just take water and rinse off the wound and get to the hospital as quick as you can. Antivenom is the only thing that's going to help. Uh, if you have rings like this, you want to get them off or watches because you do uh, experience swelling with many rattlesnake bites. But the, the best thing is to get medical attention. You can't take antivenom out in the field with you. It has to be administered intravenous through a hospital. So just try not to get too excited. If you get uh, your blood going too much, it can actually hurt. So try to relax and simply uh, get to the hospital as quick as you can. Uh, a lot of people ask me, well, what, what if I'm out in the desert or wilderness all by myself? I recommend uh, not doing that. You really shouldn't ever be out by yourself in case something goes wrong. But uh, try to, to, to be relaxed as you can and just get to the hospital as quickly as possible. 
And most hospitals carry antivenin, especially around here in Arizona, or they can get you to a hospital that has it. Okay, as you can see now, the rattlesnake's starting to move. And uh, generally, if you find a rattlesnake moving like this on the trail, I would just leave it alone, okay? He's moving, he's not bothering you. Sometimes they'll stretch out really straight and go really slow, and it looks like they're not moving. But if you see that, and you just wait a few minutes, you'll start to notice that they are moving. And if you just wait, give them some time, they'll go off the trail and leave you alone. Here's an example from my research of what to do if you find a rattlesnake slowly crossing a road or trail. All right, check that out. So here is a big rattlesnake. Okay, it looks like a Mojave. All right, so he's just slowly crossing the road here. And this is part of my research, so I just stand here. I'm about 10 feet away, and I'm trying to see how they react if I get close to them but don't touch them. So this is kind of typical. So he's definitely aware of me. He's tongue flicking. He's looking at me but he is not doing anything that is defensive. So yeah, rattlesnakes, if you leave them alone, they'll leave you alone. There you have it. So as you can see, this snake uh, did not feel threatened. I mean, I, I didn't do anything to it. I wasn't harassing it. I wasn't throwing rocks at it. And it just was doing its thing. And so th this is a really good example. This is a good encounter with the rattlesnake. If we just give them the space and leave them alone, you're, you're going to be fine. Statistics show us it's people that are actively picking up the snake and pinning it and doing things like that that uh, get bit. And so I think we can safely live around rattlesnakes. They're not. Uh, as big as a threat as we're made to believe. Uh, the, this one never chased me, he never came at me, he never even rattled this whole time. And that is very typical. I found in my research that the rattlesnakes aren't uh, interested in uh, chasing us. They're not, a, a lot of times they don't wanna rattle, they just wanna be left alone. And so uh, I hope this helped. Just give them the distance. Rattlesnakes aren't as aggressive as we generally believe they are. Uh, if you like this, uh, try it, check out some of my other videos. Uh, subscribe and comment below. Thanks for watching.